Hey guys, I'm Alicia Gentile and welcome to Friday's episode of The Boaters TV. Let's see what's making waves in nautical news. One man's childhood dream is now turning into a 25,000 pound reality. It's history in the making with this new boat design. The Marion Hyper Sub Submersible Power Boat is the first small craft filled with horsepower, sea keeping, and range to allow operation on the high seas. The Hyper Boat functions as a speed boat and submarine. If the military approves it, it could be used to help protect our nation. The creator of the Hyper Sub, Reynolds Marion, envisioned this idea when he was only a child. When I was 11 years old, uh, my brother and I decided we were going to try to build a raft for uh, the great James River raft race. And you won a prize or an award uh, for the most original raft. And so at 11, I started becoming obsessed with, uh, you know, buoyancies, displacements, meta centers, you know, craft stability. This vessel has 900 horsepower and is capable of 45 miles an hour. That is pretty impressive for a 25,000 pound boat. Marion and his team have accomplished more than 21 test dives since the team's first history making test dive was successfully completed on November 13th. It is the first time ever a hypersub hit water. Now that this prototype has been tested, developers feel that it should be on the market within the next couple of years. So, if you are looking for a boat, be sure to bring a fat checkbook or hit the lottery sometime soon because the price tag is estimated to start at about $3.5 million. Next up, it's time for our Boat Test Reports Feature of the Week. Hi, I'm Captain Randy Emmerman and today we're on board a Henrique 35 Express. The upper console station was easy to reach and felt safe and secure. The helm layout included digital throttle and shift controls, trim tabs, and was uncluttered and comfortable. Thigh bolsters will reduce the bruises when fighting a fish on board, and a large tuna door will make it much easier to drag the monster into the cockpit. Twin 100-gallon fish boxes will keep your catch fresh when filled with ice. The cockpit also sports an insulated drink box, bait cooler, or optional freezer, as well as a well-designed bait and tackle center. The helm deck includes all the modern conveniences and room for your favorite electronics. A large sole hatch with twin assist rods leads into the engine spaces. This is powered by twin 420 Cummins inline sixes. The engine room is open, expansive, and gives you plenty of room to hit all your service points. Now that we looked at some of the fishing capabilities of the Henrique, let's go down below and take a look at some of the amenities she offers. Create the space you want up front. This one has a convertible V-berth with lots of cabinets for storage and its own entertainment center. The dinette quickly converts into another berth and the seat back pops out to become a single Murphy bed on our test model. The head has an electric toilet, handheld shower head, and vanity. Standard galley accommodations include microwave, stove top, 110 12-volt refrigerator freezer, sink, and laminated counters. The new 35 Express carries a length on average of 38 feet 3 inches with the pulpit, 35 feet 4 inches without it. Her 13-foot beam means she can take on the big waters. She carries a draft of 42 inches and a displacement of about 21,000 pounds. Fuel capacity is 365 gallons and water capacity is 65 gallons. I tested the 35 Express on the intercoastal waterways near Jupiter, Florida. I found her top end to be at 36.2 miles an hour for 2,970 RPM, delivering 277 miles on a full tank of fuel. She cruised along comfortably at 2,250 RPM for 24.2 miles an hour and 368 miles. She's on plane in about 8.8 .8 seconds and reaches 30 miles an hour in 11.7 seconds. So let's grab your rods and bait, power up the diesels, and let's head out into the blue water so we can hook into some large game fish. Thanks to Boat Test for that report. To see more of the report, you can cruise on over to Boat Test's website at www.boattest.com. Moving on in ships' domains, the list of the top 10 blogs for 2007 are here. Have any of you come across some interesting blogs over the past year? 
Blogger Tillerman, a sailor who blogs on blogspot.com, has come out with his list of the top 10 boating blogs. Topping the list is the EVK4 Superblog. Edward's superb blog has the unique distinction of being the only blog to make Tillerman's top 10 list three years in a row. Edward is just a regular guy who day sails with his friends and family on San Francisco Bay with a dream to sail across the Pacific to Hawaii one day. Sliding in at number two is A Thousand Days at Sea, the blog of Reed Stowe and Sonia Ahmad as they attempt to achieve a world record by staying at sea without making landfall for a thousand days on their 70-foot gaff-rigged schooner, Anne. At number three, we have the Rule 69 blog, described as hand grenade journalism by the author Magnus Wheatley. The blog is the best source of news and strong opinions on the yachting controversies of the day. Tillerman, a laser sailor, includes two excellent blogs by the sailors who won the Laser Radical and Laser Olympic Trials this year. Coming in at number four are Anna Tunicliffe and Andrew Campbell's blog about laser regattas. Here's a picture of Anna flying a blade ride moth. If you like windsurfing, you'll enjoy the Peaconic Puffin blog by Michael. Michael goes out windsurfing in ice, rain, freezing slush, and 50 knot winds, and then makes us believe how much fun it was. And that is why the Peaconic Puffin blog takes the number five spot. If you want to know what the last top five blogs are, you can find it on theboaters.com under the news section, or you can check out Tillerman's blog at www.propercourse.blogspot.com. And finally today, it's time to reveal Alicia's theboaters.com celebrity profile pic of the day, which is... Captain Ray Cromwell and his 43-foot Silverton 2004 39 motor yacht, Princess. Ray has plenty of photos of his princess, both of them. Ray does most of his boating on lakes. Here is Princess in Vermilion, Ohio. Welcome to the boaters, Ray, and congrats on making it to celebrity status. And that's a wrap on this episode of The Boaters TV. Have a safe and happy boating weekend. See you back here on Monday.